Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Ouyang. I'm from GCT Global. Uh, this morning, I'm very excited to be here, uh, especially at this moment. Uh, if you ask me why, I think this is the only chance I can remove my mask. <laughs> uh, I really hope very soon we don't need to wear the mask. Okay, uh, this project is sponsored and supported by the uh, Meta Platform and the JCET. Uh, from the Meta Platform, the people are in hand and uh, Ravi Agarwal. I think I need to apologize to Ravi. Uh, I'm not sure I pronounced his last name correctly. Okay, and uh, from the JCET side, uh, the people are myself and the YH uh, and the Jaden. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, let me talk about the background of this project. Uh, here I have two uh, bullets. Uh, the first one uh, is as more slow slow down, uh, we, became, uh, we begin to face uh, many fundamental limits related to the size and the layer of a chip. Uh, designers are looking for building a device in the vertical direction, such as 2.5D and 3D IC. Uh, packaging solutions. Uh, as you can see, two, when we have the 2.5D two, 2 and the 3D, the thermal could be a problem. And this leads to the second bullet. The thermal management becomes critical and challenging when the power dissipation level and the level of complexity in packaging architect, architect, uh, architectures increase. Under these circumstances, exploring the integrated thermal performance from package level to the uh, bowl level is needed to ensure the performance and the reliability of high power components. Okay, let me move on to the next slide. Uh, for this slide, I'd like to uh, talk about a little bit about the reason uh, we are working on this project. Uh, JCET, as a IC packaging company, we have been uh, designing and manufacturing uh, various kinds of the uh, IC packages, including the free chip, wire bound, and the wafer label packages. And one of, one of our uh, priorities and the focus is the uh, chiplet uh, modulus. Uh, when we design the chiplet modulus, I think the first question uh, probably now is that, how are you going to design it? Uh, because uh, for a chiplet uh, modular, we can have different configurations. As you can see from this uh, slide, you may think, uh, are we going to use the monolithic die, or MCM, or 2.5D, or even the 3D uh, stake-up structures? And uh, in order to select the best options, uh, we do a, a case study. We uh, do the simulation. We consider the uh, electrical, thermal, and also the manufacturing. Uh, but for today's presentation, we will focus on the, uh, <coughs> on the thermal. Uh, I'd like to share you, uh, basically we are using the, the second one and the third one, MC, oh, I'm sorry, MCN and 2.5D as the baseline. So for this study, we will have two SRAM, as you can see from this picture, and one ASIC, okay? So for the MCM and the 2.5D, the, the, the die size will be the same, but the design will be different. Uh, as you can see, the gap distance will be different. So basically, we consider not only the thermal, we also consider the electrical and the layout. And for the monolithic die, uh, it's very straightforward. We have only one die. And the die size will be a little bit smaller because uh, this single die will perform all the function of the stream and the uh, ASIC. And the right figure is the uh, 3D stack up structure. Uh, the two stream are on top and uh, we have the ASIC and then the substrate. Uh, here I also like, like to mention that for the 2.5D we have an interposer between the uh, silicon and the substrate. Okay. And uh, to compare the thermal difference, we decided to do uh, a lot of simulation. And the table on this slide uh, is to sh uh, show you the, uh, all the options. Uh, monolithic, MCM, 2.5D uh, interposer, and the 3D. 
and the package size is 65 by 65. And as I mentioned earlier, that uh, for the monolithic die, the uh, die size will be a little bit smaller. But for the MCM 2.5D and the 3D, uh, we are using the same uh, die size. And the, the next one is the die uh, thickness. Uh, also, I found in manufacturing uh, consideration, the die, size, the die thickness will be also different. And the total power is uh, uh, 214 uh, watts. And to compare the difference, we need to we do a, we do a simulation, and we need to use the same uh, boundary condition and the environmental condition. For example, the ambient temperature is uh, we we use is 30 degree, and then we also use the same flow rate, uh, which is 20 cfm. And to have a an apple to apple comparison, we are also using the same uh, thermal interface material, and the lead. And uh, on top of the lead, we also have a uh, heating fins. And you can see the, the bottom three figures. The, the, the first one is the monolithic. And the second, the second one, uh, it can be uh, either MCM or 2.5 uh, in the poster. And you can see the hot, there's a hot spot. And the right figure, this one is a stack die. Uh, for this one, the, the, all the power are, are, you know, uh, are concentrated. Uh, together. Uh, so uh, let me see. Okay, I think I'm going to pass in. Basically, for now, I'm just going to talk about the introduction, and uh, Ian is going to share you the uh, detailed simulation data and the result. Thank you, Eric. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Ying. Uh, I'm from Meta, and I'm a thermal engineer. So uh, after that, I will cover the simulation results and uh, walk you through some thermal considerations. Uh, so this is a table summarizes uh, like uh, the um, thermal performance or simulation results among the four uh, package options, uh, and then I will walk you through the details in this slide. So the first observation we found is like the junction temperature, the monolithic die is slightly higher than uh, that of the MCM and the 2.D package, uh, which is because uh, the reason is that Eric just mentioned the monolithic die. Uh, the, when we design the package, it's smaller compared with the MCM and the 2.D. Uh, so the heat is more concentrated into a small area and uh, not very easy to dissipate. And then also uh, the junction temperature of a 3D stacked package is also much higher than the um, other package options. The reason is for the 3D stacked, we go through vertically, uh, and the heat transfer path is longer compared with uh, um, the 2D design or the plano design. And for multiple chip design, the ticket center is not always a good indicator to design the cooling solutions. Uh, why we see that? Why we see this? Uh, for example, like if we uh, see in this case study, we have MCM and a 2.D interposal design. Uh, as you can see, the junction temperature from ASIC and SRAM are pretty similar in, the, in these two cases. However, the case temperature actually has like five degrees C difference. So if we use like uh, if we consider to use the TK center as a um, temperature limitation when we design the thermal solution without considering the package design options, that's probably not a very uh, good uh, choice. So uh, last but not least, when dice are placed closer to each other, higher power dice will hit the lower power dice. Uh, the impact gets bigger when the uh, power limit power difference between the ASIC and the SRAM gets bigger. So in this case, uh, if you see this plot below, we have like MCM and 2.D interposal. So in the, in the right side, that's an ASIC die, which dissipates about 200 watts. And there are two like uh, SRAM dies, which dissipates about only like 32 watts. So you can see like the heat from the uh, ASIC die actually is the impact like the adjacent SRAM dies. So in order to uh, solve this kind of a hot spot problem, uh, in the following slides, we will uh, demonstrate our vapor chamber data like to see how vapor chamber can help to control the uh, surface temperature and reduce the hot spot. And before that, we also want to point out uh, two factors, uh, which is not like only the thermal concern. Uh, so first of all, the monolithic uh, silicon develop usually have the higher cost than the MCM and the 2.D interposal. Uh, and also the 3D stacked dies, um, from manufacturing point of view, it's more complex. 
So uh, here is an example showing like uh, uh, how the vapor chamber can help reduce the, uh, the hot spot. Uh, so in this case, in order to uh, show like how effectiveness the vapor chamber is, uh, we actually increase the ASIC power from the baseline 200 watts to 300 watts, uh, and also keep the ASRAM die still at 32 watts. Uh, in order to, uh, because of this power increase, we also increase the uh, uh, total airflow going to the heatsink. Uh, so as you can see, like uh, for these cases, uh, we applied uh, half of the heatsink base area to be a vapor chamber, uh, which is directly on the top of the uh, ASIC die area. And then as you can see the results, the ASIC temperature reduces about 10 degrees C, uh, and the ASRAM temperature also reduce, reduced about uh, uh, 5 degrees C. The delta T between the ASIC and the ASRAM also gets smaller. So it means the vapor chamber is used to conduct the heat to outside the heat sink surface uh, efficiently, and also able to lower the overall temperature, including the hot spots and that uh, can be controlled the temperature distribution and the grinding better than the normal like a copper base or aluminum base. So moving to the conclusion and the discussion page, uh, we found that the MCM and the 2.D interposer package design have better thermal performance compared to the monolithic die and the 3D package. Uh, and the use the ticket center for the early stage thermal uh, design might be misleading without considering the differences of the package design. Uh, and there are various cooling solutions can be uh, used to mitigate the issue of the hot spots. Uh, for example, like a vapor chamber, we just uh, discussed in this study. Uh, and also uh, other couple options can be the leadless package, uh, although that might uh, occur some like a mechanical risk in certain cases. And also the team material improvement, improvement such as the user metal teams. Uh, okay, so for the core or two action slides, uh, we would like to expansion of the ODSA community uh, and looking forward to have more collaborations on the thermal side under the ODSA. Uh, for example, like uh, uh, to develop of the power management methodology to predict the thermal reliability of silicon and also how to correlate the test and the simulation to better correlate the package thermal modeling uh, method. And also here are the two links which direct to the project wiki with the last specification and the mailing list. So yeah, please uh, uh, attend the rest of the ODSA talks. Uh, and uh, thanks everyone um, for attending our presentation. Appreciate it.